Hi, I'm Tanya Hall. I'm a missionary to the developing world, social worker, academic educator, and final year PhD candidate. I'm also a published author and president of a church planting movement in Pakistan. So welcome to vlog number three, Overcoming Frustration. Today's topic was inspired once again by the current global health pandemic, COVID-19. You know, most of the church is experiencing at the moment some level of frustration because, you know, we can go to the shops, we can go to the supermarkets and the place is jam packed, yet still we're restricted to gathering only 10 people at once, which means the majority of the churches can't open. So what is frustration? You know, frustration is a common emotional response to opposition. It can present as anger, annoyance, or even disappointment. Experiencing frustration over a long period of time can be a bad thing because it can lead to stress, discouragement, and it can even cause people just to give up altogether. You know, it's important to recognize that frustration is experienced during time of transition and frustration is most intense right before breakthrough. It's also important to recognize that frustration is an indication that something needs to change and that something is in you. Let me tell you about my last job. In my last job, I'd been there for a long period of time, many years, I knew my job really well. I was a faithful employee and never missed a day, always pretty much on time. And while I was working, I also was studying full time. So I got myself qualified uh, as a social worker and was working in human services. During those years in that, in that uh, job, I was very blessed to have the opportunity to uh, try different leadership roles and act in different leadership positions. So during that period of time, I felt like I really got to know my job. In the end, there wasn't, the last couple of years, I was very frustrated. I was frustrated because I didn't feel there was any more room for me to grow. And I felt like I was quite restricted in the position that I was in. So as a result, I started to develop a lot of frustration. It was a sign that I had outgrown my role and a change was needed. You know, you can't blame others when you feel frustrated because frustration is something which occurs within. You're in control of your life. You're in charge. You're in control over what you think and over what you do, where you spend your time. You are in control. So it's important that we learn to respond positively to frustration because it can be a really good thing. So today I'm going to give you three tips on how to overcome frustration. Number one, reevaluate what is most important. Matthew chapter six, verse 24 says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. So you can't serve two masters. That will frustrate you. So what we need to do when we're experiencing frustration is we need to step back and look at the big picture, assess everything. And then once we assess everything, we need to make a choice. Make a choice, be sure and make a choice. I was speaking to a friend of mine, Paul Robertson from The Prophetic Coach last week, and we were talking about frustration. He was telling me how when he coaches people, he has a look and he helps people identify what it is that frustrates them. Because if he can help them identify what frustrates them, he can help identify what their calling is or what their purpose in life is. So today I'm asking you, what is your frustration? 
and what is your frustration revealing about what is most important to you? Number two, decide what you want for your future. So James chapter one verse eight says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. If you're double-minded about a relationship in your life, or you're double-minded about a job or a career which you're doing, or if you're uh, double-minded about where you're located, any time that trouble hits, you're going to question what you're doing and you're going to doubt it. I'm going to encourage you today, decide what exactly it is that you want in your future, where you want to be, where you are headed. Decide on it and be sure of, be sure of it. Don't change your mind. Be sure that you've made up your mind and don't question it. Any time that trouble hits or that you have a hard time, remember that you've already made your decision and now you have to see it through. So today I'm going to ask you, where do you see yourself in the future? Number three, take action. Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wow, we serve a mighty God who makes a way where there seems like there is none. The only way to beat frustration is to take action, to start moving forward, to start doing something. That is the only way to move forward and to get out of frustration. I'm going to tell you a little story. You know, I knew that I, I had a call to the developing world. I knew it. But before I went overseas and traveled to Pakistan, I experienced intense frustration. It was overwhelming frustration. The frustration I experienced was so intense that it caused me to get on a plane by myself as a woman and fly to Pakistan. Okay, once I was there, the you know my purpose and and my my plan in life all started to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and I felt like I came alive. But it was the frustration that caused me, that irritated me so much that it caused me to step out and to do something new. So frustration can be a really good thing. We need to identify, uh, reevaluate what is most important to us. We need to decide what we want for our future. And then we need to take action. And that is how we overcome frustration. Let me tell you today, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He thought about you, he knew you before you were even born into this world. You know, if you wanna discover the plan and purpose for your life, I'm gonna invite you to know your creator and to invite Jesus into your, into your heart. So right now, I'm gonna say a little prayer and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause and give you time to repeat it after me. To invite Jesus into your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you are risen from the dead and that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm forgiven, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time today, I would love you to get in contact with me. You can email me at tanya 
www.anna.hall at gmail.com and also I would love for you to subscribe to my channel anytime you have a question or a topic which you would like covered I would love for you to email me and let me know I'll see you soon and bless you here